Worried about gout? Check out Euro, the effective urinary alkalinizer. Euro, neutralize your uric acid problem now. This is Kini News and I'm your host Prasad. If you're wondering why Brasatu still hasn't pulled their support from Ismail Sabri's government like they did with Harapan, it's because they care about your safety and want you to be safe away from Omicron. Of course, it's got nothing to do with it being politically disadvantageous. Bursatu will not leave the federal government and trigger a general election in the interest of public safety. This is according to the party's poster boy himself, Muhyiddin Yassin. The Bursatu president said putting support in the current Omicron wave would trigger severe public backlash. Muhyiddin said Bursatu had taken into consideration public and national interests to avoid unnecessary loss of life despite its now strained ties with AMNO. Bursatu memikir soal kepentingan rakyat, kepentingan negara supaya rakyat jangan terkorban disebabkan oleh langkah uh, bodoh kita untuk bertindak seperti itu hanya memikirkan Pentingan kita, parti kita. Nanti rakyat akan kata, what the hell are you trying to do? You are the midst of this Omicron. You mean to say you want to see us die? Itu soalan. You mean to say I'm not saya? Tidak concern? I want to ask you. You're all very qualified. Are you not concerned? He said this when asked to justify Bersatu's insistence to remain in Putrajaya with Abno despite its recent fallout. If you have power, you abuse your power just because of your own self, uh, at the expense of life and livelihood of your people. I think you are most irresponsible. On a separate matter, Muhyiddin said Bursatu will be entering the Johor polls alongside PAS and Gerakan under Perikatan National. He expects seat negotiations among the three parties to be concluded by tomorrow. At the same time, he said the Joe elections would be an opportunity for voters in the state to consider whether they want to continue being associated with corrupt leaders from BN, including from the court cluster. Show me the money. And why Abraham is soon receiving some from Kairi Jamaluddin after the Court of Appeal dismissed the AMNO leader's appeal over the infamous mind belakang remark. Health Minister Karin Jamaluddin's appeal against opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim's defamation suit over a 2008 mine belakang remark has been dismissed by the Court of Appeal. A three-person bench chaired by Lee Sui Seng unanimously ruled that there was no appealable error that warrants the bench's intervention. It was also ordered that the appellant pay 50,000 ringgit in costs to Anwar. Today was set for the decision on the former AMNO Youth Chief's appeal against a Kuala Lumpur High Court ruling on September 29, 2017, which ruled that he was liable for defaming Anwar with a remark made at a Churama in Lumba Pantai Kuala Lumpur in the run-up to GE12. The lower court ordered the Rambau MP to pay 150,000 ringgit in damages to the Port Dixon MP. The bench today added that the trial judge's ruling for Kairi to pay 150000 in damages to Anwar was not manifestly excessive and thus does not warrant the Court of Appeals' intervention. The bench unanimously ruled that there was no error on the part of lower court judge Azizul Azmi Adnan's findings that Kairi's remark was defamatory against Anwar. Bursatu isn't pulling support from AMNO, but that won't stop Bosku from calling Bursatu's information chief stupid. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak has called Bursatu Information Chief Wan Saiful Wan Jan as quite stupid for challenging AMNO to pray their central leaders during the upcoming Johor polls. Najib said there was no reason to do so as it is a state and not a national election. Wan Saiful had challenged AMNO to use leaders such as Najib and AMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi as symbols during these state polls. On a post on Facebook, Najib said it is clearly a state election, so surely the Chief Minister or Mantri Bursa will be the poster boy, as what BN did during the Malacca polls. Wan Saiful has been on a whirlwind campaign in Johor even before the date for the state election is announced. During his visit to Sumbrong, Johor, Wan Saiful said Bursatu President Moedin Yassin was PN's undisputable poster boy. Najib has been sentenced to 12 years in prison and fined 210 million ringgit for abuse of power, money laundering and criminal breach of trust with regard to SRC funds. He is appealing the conviction at the federal court. Meanwhile, Zaid has also been ordered to enter defence over the alleged misappropriation of funds involving his charitable foundation. If Bursatu is a sinking ship, where do you think Bursatu members would go? How about the party 
whose logo is literally a boat that's not sinking. Hundreds of Tanjung Piai Bersatu members announced last night that they have quit the party. Some 300 of them will now join Warisan, the Sabah-based party that is spreading its wings to the peninsula. Harian Metro reported that the move was led by Tanjung Pia Bersatu Secretary Hisamuddin Busri. Walaupun berat hati saya, tapi ingin saya maklumkan. Kami uh, telah bincang dengan secara mendalam. Maka hari ini kami mengumumkan bahawa kami, saya mewakili kawan-kawan, mengumumkan keluar daripada bersatu dengan serta mereka. Hari ini kita buat uh, tidak dipaksa oleh penumpang pihak dan kami buat secara sukarela. He somewhat claimed that the party was losing direction and no longer reflected the principles of struggle and hopes of the grassroots. Also present were Warisan Vice President Junz Wong and Tanjung Pia Bersatu Treasurer Muhammad Rashid Alfred. Bersatu won the Tanjung Pia parliamentary seat in the 2018 general election but suffered a massive defeat in November 2019 in the by-election that was called following the death of incumbent Muhammad Farid Muhammad Rafiq. In late January, Johor Bersatu Chief Mazlan Bujang resigned from the party and was followed two days later by former ex-co member Mohamed Izar Ahmad, who also announced he was quitting. You're probably tired of watching Amnon Bersatu fight. I mean, if they're fighting each other, who's going to attack Pakatan Harapan? Well, it's your lucky day. Bersatu Information Chief Wan Saifu Wan Jan said Pakatan Harapan slash cash aid to Nidhi Raya during its time as the government. He said that he witnessed this when Bersatu was part of Pakatan Harapan. Therefore, he called it dangerous for the country to be under Pakatan Harapan's administration. Pakatan Harapan's agenda will cause continuous instability in the country. He said at a Perikatan national event yesterday in preparation for the Johor state election. Kita melihat juga betapa tak kala rakyat memerlukan bantuan Tak kala rakyat memohon pertolongan, agenda Pakatan Harapan ialah potong sana, potong sini. Bantuan itu dikurangkan, bantuan ini dipotong, bantuan itu ditiadakan. Wan Saifu added that he recalled there was an aid allocation amounting to 30 ringgit only. He exclaimed that it was impossible for rakyat to survive with 30 ringgit as a meal or two would have finished it off. Anwar Ibrahim has come up with the idea of punishing logging companies responsible for the floods by making them compensate flood victims. Opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim suggested logging companies contributing to the recent flood disaster to compensate flood victims. He added that the government should force these logging firms to do so. The Port Dixon MP said that he had recommended this at the special parliament session on floods last month, to which it was not well received possibly due to fear or that the politicians hit self-interest, he said. Untung, sudah tahu satu tahun, export balak itu bernilai 8 bilion ringgit. Tak bolehkah beratus juta dibagikan kepada orang yang menjadi mangsa? During the Selangor Flood Volunteers Appreciation event yesterday, Anwar also encouraged the volunteers to look out for potential causes of the flood when helping on site. The church in Chalam, which was destroyed by a fire recently, will receive some government aid. The church in Kota Kemuning Sha'alam that was destroyed in a fire on February 2nd will receive some aid from the National Unity Ministry. This was announced by Deputy National Unity Minister Wan Ahmad Faisal Wan Ahmad Kamal during a visit to the site today. So far, authorities found no sign of foul play in the fire that burned down the Assemblies of God Church. Speaking to reporters, Wan Faisal said as the ministry responsible for non-Muslim places of worship, they will provide some assistance and a location to help any places of worship affected by a disaster. After his visit, he said the unit was definitely a total loss as all the furniture and audio-visual equipment was destroyed. He said the ministry did not have a specific amount to be given and it will depend on the assessment done by the ministry and in discussion with the church. Commenting on a separate matter, in his capacity as Bersatu Youth Chief, Wan Faisal agreed with the government that EPF is not a solution for people facing financial problems. 
Saya berpandangan pihak Kementerian Kewangan dan juga pihak bank negara perlu utarakan penyelesaian di luar kotak. Lain daripada apa yang kita dengar daripada pemuda AMNO khususnya tentang KWSP ini. Saya bersetuju dengan kerajaan, dengan Yang Mahmud Perdana Menteri, dengan Yang Mahmud Menteri Kewangan. KWSP bukanlah penyelesaian yang patut kita gunakan untuk membantu rakyat kita yang susah. Raising the minimum wage to 1.5k is not such a good idea, according to the Federation representing the people who would have to fork out more money. The Malaysian Employers Federation, MEF, has warned that the implementation of the 1,500 new minimum wage would derail economic recovery. MEF President Said Hussein Said Husman said the majority of Malaysian businesses are not ready and not in a position to implement the proposed new minimum wage. He said this is because they are still reeling from the economic shock triggered by COVID-19 and the devastating impact of the recent floods. He added that almost 99% of Malaysian businesses are micro, small and medium enterprises. Said Hussein said MSMEs are already suffering and even a small increase in business costs would aggravate their plight. He feared that they might even close down, what more with an increase of 300 to 400 ringgit per month on top of the existing national minimum wage. He said the 1,500 minimum wage will also push up the cost of goods and services and operation costs will definitely increase. He added that an employee whose current wages are well above the minimum wage would be demotivated with no salary adjustment. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kiddytv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.